I've made an air dry clay before using toilet paper, which gives a really lovely fine paper clay or air dry clay. I've also made a brilliant paste using joint compound and a few other ingredients, but I want to see if I can make a coarser one using recycled material. For instance, egg boxes, this came with avocado pear and some toilet rolls. Now I'm not sure if this is going to work out as well because this has already been recycled once and it may have already broken down the fibres, but we're going to give it a go. Now before I go ahead and do the mix, I am going to take off any paper or anything that's on there that isn't of the same material. And this should just come off fairly easily if you pull it off. I want nothing but this type of material because I'm looking to make a more coarser air dry clay and I think this will make the coarser air dry clay. Now if you haven't seen my other air dry clay recipes I will link them in the description below and as a card at the end of this video. And what I'm going to do then is rip all this up into fairly small pieces and I want to do a mixture of the egg boxes, the toilet rolls, and the other bits and pieces that I've got. But it's all very similar material to this. So if you haven't got any of these or you live in a country where they don't give you egg boxes that are made out of this sort of stuff, then you know that you can use toilet rolls or, or whatever you have. Now I've got that all mixed up and there's a lovely mixture in there. Now I'm using some hot water here to soak this in and I will leave this once it's absolutely all covered soaking in this hot water for about two hours because I find that'll help break it all down and get it into a nice texture ready for the next stage. And hopefully if this works this is gonna again save me a fortune. There we go, we'll, I'm going to put some more hot water in there and then we'll take a look at it again in two hours and you'll really see the difference. This has been soaking and I left it to soak overnight. The toilet roll inside broke down really easily, virtually to nothing. But this recycled paper for the egg boxes, it's very wet, but it's not breaking down very easily. Now this might be because when they reform the pulp, they add a glue or something to it. What I'm gonna do is add some more hot water to this, so I've got a bit more water in there, and so it's not as cold on my little fungals. And then I'm gonna go through with my mixer with the, like, the kneading dough blades on to see if that will break it up a little bit. Now, I want this to be a textured paste, so that should be fine. And what I'm gonna do is do this for probably about four or five minutes to see if I can break it down. Well, I've got that broken down now into a, like a, I don't know, I would call that a slurry maybe. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that is going to be quite textured and it has broken down. There are still some bits in there that aren't broken down, but that is going to be absolutely fine for what I want it to do. My next job is to get the water out of this or quite a bit of water out of this. And how I'm going to do that is sieve it over this bucket and just let gravity do its thing. I don't want to squeeze this down because what I don't want to do is end up compacting it all again. So I'm going to let that do its thing for a few minutes, complete the rest of it and then add the other ingredients. So I've got this all now drained off and it is still got some water in, look. Okay, it's not completely squeezed out and dry because I want some of that water in there. And what I'm going to do now is add my wet ingredients, which is what I've done before. The first thing I'm going to add is one teaspoon of thick bleach. And the reason is it stops mold spores appearing if you're gonna store this and while it's drying on something, it won't go moldy. Really important to add this to it. And that is all you need. You won't need much and despite some of the questions I got like, doesn't bleach cause mold? No, it doesn't. Bleach actually, <laughs> that, that is an old wives tale. Bleach will kill mold spores and stop it going bad when you store in it and we have mold spores in the air all the time so <laughs> they're gonna get into it so that's the first thing the other thing is I'm going to be using 125 grams which is about one cup of white glue and that's just a PVA glue that I'm using here and I'll leave this to the side because I may depending on how thick it is or what it's doing I may change it and add a little bit more glue to it. I won't add any more water though. The other thing is I want to add is some cornstarch. I find this really gives it a good effect, but I'm only going to add 64 grams of this. We call it corn flour in the UK, but I know that in America you call it cornstarch. 
There we go. I'm also going to add a teaspoon of glycerin, food quality glycerin, because that helps, I think, make it a little bit more malleable and mould it a little bit more. The last thing I'm going to add is some powder, which is joint compound. I like the powder joint compound, but if you can't get the powdered joint compound, use the ready mix. Just reduce the amount of water down in your stuff first as well because it will contain some water and I add 128 grams of this to it now I think this might be a little bit dry but we will see in a minute now before I do anything else to this I'm going to give this a good mix round so I've got all those powders and everything mixed in before I need to do anything else because I don't want all that shooting everywhere and I learnt this because I didn't last time and I made a terrible mess I think that might be a wet enough solution. And now the relaxing bit where I'm going to use my dough hooks again and just go through and mix this up probably for about five minutes. So that's mixed up lovely now and it's all about testing it to see if it works. What I want it for is making things like bricks and that sort of stuff and I want it to have a texture to it which my other paste doesn't really have. And as you can see, that has got a lovely texture to it. So I'm going to make some bricks on here and then let it dry. If you want to smooth any of these bits out, you can smooth them out really easily. All you need to do is pop a bit of water on whatever knife you're using and you can smooth it out. And then to do my bricks, all I do is I draw my lines across like that. And then I put my bricks in, put my first row in like that. I'll put some in there. This is for a castle that I'm going to be making. <laughs> I've been promising to make a castle for a long, long time. And I wanted to make sure that I had something that really gave me a texture of like stone. Now, what I'm also going to do is go in here and move some of this about a little bit where I flattened it down perhaps too much. And we'll see the texture on it, I think, a little bit more once it's got some paint on. But you can definitely see that that is very well textured. Now what I'm going to do is leave this to dry for the next 12 hours in somewhere warm. It might need a little bit longer than that, but we will see. And how I store this is, and as I said before, with this recipe, you can store it for quite a long time and it's still as good as new. All I do is I pop it in a bag like this, get as much air out of it as I possibly can because I don't want any air in it because that is all the air is going to do is create pockets in there to dry it out and I don't want it to dry out. And then I can seal the bag up. Ziploc bag is m normally better for this. And then roll that over like that. So what I normally store it in is something like this. This is an ice cream tub. I know I eat far too much ice cream. So all I'll do is I'll pop that in there, put the lid on, get any excess air out of there like that and then store it. I'll come back as soon as the other one's dry and I'll see how well it gets on. Well this is all dry now. I left it overnight and it has gone rock solid which is exactly what I wanted. Now we need to see if it paints because it's no good if it doesn't paint is it? All I'm going to use is some acrylic paints on it. I'm not going to give it a massive paint job because I really want to see first how it comes out. I'm using it a quite a watery paint to start with because I want to make sure that it's not going to cause any problems to the actual air dry clay but it really has given a great texture. It's painted lovely and it's taken the colour on okay. Okay, I'm going to give that, let that dry for two seconds. Well, actually, I'm not. I'm going to dry it with my air dryer. And that should be dry enough now. And um, what I'm going to do is do a grey over the top. Bring that back out. Then put some highlights into it with a little bit of white. Oh, that texture is really picking up those highlights well. And then I'm going to put a little bit of green on it as well as if it was moss. I really like that. I think that has come out very, very well. I'm not sure how well the camera's picking it up, but I do think that looks very stone-like. Brilliant texture. It's not rough at all. And it has got some smooth bits, but some really nice textured bits in it as well. It's going to be great for what I want to use it for. Really pleased with that recipe. Didn't think it was going to work out to start with because the egg boxes just didn't want to break up. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. I'd love to know what sort of things you make your textured stuff out of. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And please boot that like button. It really helps me to know what you like and it gives me so much pleasure when I get likes on a video. Take care, enjoy your crafting, bye.